Hey everyone, Natalia here, and you're watching What Is Happening. This is my special three-part series on the Cold War. And if you're just tuning in, I suggest you go back to the first video just so you can get the full picture. Uh, but if not, welcome to part two, NATO. So as I mentioned before, after the American surprise atomic attack on Japan, Stalin freaks out and he starts expanding the Soviet Union eastward. He kind of creates this buffer zone between the east and the west. So the west responded to this by forming NATO in 1949. NATO is a military alliance where all of the members agree that they're going to come to another member's defense should that uh, member be attacked. Uh, the Soviets, they had their own version called the Warsaw Pact, but that was dissolved in 1991 when the Soviet Union fell apart. And NATO, as you probably know, is still around today. So it started with 12 member states, and today it has 49. Fast forward to today, and this actually explains a lot of the tension that we have with Russia. See, as NATO expands eastward, it becomes more and more of a threat to Russia. And it also brings up some old wounds. See, the Russians claimed that the Americans broke a promise that they wouldn't expand NATO eastward, and because of that, they can't be trusted. Putin has used this to justify aggressive action in places like Georgia and Crimea and Ukraine. And then the Americans say that such a promise never happened. And as usual, the truth is somewhere in between. <laughs> Historians have done a lot of digging on this, and they found out that, yeah, the Americans did say, hey, sure, you know, we're not going to expand NATO eastward. But then at the same time, there was never any formal declaration or document or anything that they can find that was ever signed. Let's bring this all back to today. What does this mean? Well, since the Cold War ended, NATO has had to rethink its vision and its purpose. I mean, think about it. It was designed to prevent the Soviet Union from expanding in Europe, but the Soviet Union doesn't exist anymore. But today, NATO faces new kinds of challenges. So the Europeans, they believe that a strong NATO is critical for preventing Russian aggression and keeping the peace in Europe. And then President Trump, he's criticized the organization and its member states for not contributing enough financially to keep it alive and to keep it strong, and says that the burden falls too heavily on the United States. And then President Putin, well, he sees NATO as a direct threat to Russian interests. So where do we go from here? That remains to be seen, but I hope you enjoyed this little summary. As always, links below for further reading, strongly recommend it, and stay tuned because part three is gonna be a really good one. I think you guys are gonna like it. Thanks for watching.